All right, welcome to another video from Six Patterns. My name is Max. I'm Kevin. And today, actually, we're going to do a wild card today. Kevin doesn't know the answer to this. Wow. Case. Is that possible? It is possible. Well, he'll learn the answer as we go through it. Uh, but you're going to tell us two things here. First, we're, well, three things, actually. Basic pattern of injury. Right. Number two, you're going to speculate what the CT scan might look like from this right. biopsy. Right. And then number three, you're going to tell me what the patient's clinical history is. Right. Right. And so hopefully I'm, I'm right on And hopefully you're right. And if you're wrong, then maybe I'll redirect you. Okay, great. Appreciate that. It's good having the answers. That's right. It's always better <laughs> to have the answers than to be put on the spot like yeah, this. Yeah. Okay. Basic pattern of injury. So we've got a uh, surgical lung biopsy here that's got clear nodule formation, different sizes, different shapes. Some look like they're subpleural. Some of them are kind of bluish with some pale areas. Some are pink, look like scar. Mm -hmm. So a nodular pattern. Uh, you know, the biggest concern with nodules is always tumor. tumors. Right. So could this be a tumor? Could this be a metastatic carcinoma? Well, the edges of these nodules look a little feathery, a little uh, hairy or irregular. Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking... This with the scarred nodules and with the blue nodules, and as we get closer to the bigger blue nodules, we see that the pale zones in it look like some kind of fibroblastic organizing pneumonia like change. So, the, we so get before in, we go any further yeah. here, what would you expect the CT scan to look like? Because remember, it's always right. important to think about what the CT scan of the biopsy you're looking at right. would look like, because right. that's gonna help you understand what the clinicians are thinking, what the radiologists are thinking. I would think that nodules uh, on the CT scan are gonna be the order of the day. Right, innumerable, fine, widely distributed nodules. And maybe not so discreet, like yeah. silicosis, not sharp nodules, maybe fuzzy nodules, maybe irregular nodules. Exactly. Okay, good. So let's look a little bit more closely at what exactly is in here. And I think this nodule is kind of illustrative as far as the distribution of where this nodule is right. within the biopsy. Right. Location, location, location. So as we've always emphasized, when you're trying to figure out where something is in the biopsy, it's important to find something that looks like an artery. So we're looking for a muscular round structure hopefully with blood in it, but sometimes you don't catch the lumen. And here we have what looks like an artery. Way too many cells. It looks like the artery's been injured here. Abnormal artery. Abnormal artery, but definitely an artery. And next to it, we have some irregular bronchiolar type epithelium uh, and some small cystic spaces. But these look like we're at the center of the lobule here, an artery, a bronchial, and a lot of cellularity around this uh, so the lesions are centrolobular in their distribution. Right. So inhalational injury is what we usually think chronic of. Chronic inhalational injury. Chronic inhalational injury. And these All look right. like macrophages of some type. Yes. Uh, macrophages, abundant cytoplasm. Funny, purple, light purplish color I get a feeling of here. And lots of eosinophils mixed into a it. A lot of scattered eosinophils. So eosinophils and histiocytes that look peculiar. Some of them are kind of uh, have reniform nuclei. Some of them have kind of a funny colored cytoplasm. So very irregularly shaped. Huh? Very irregular. And some of them are a little atypical too. They are. I could imagine somebody atypical. looking at this and thinking maybe this is some weird kind of neoplasm. Neoplasm, exactly. A few prominent nucleoli in some of these as yep. well. Yeah. Okay, so, so before you tell me what this patient's clinical history is, Let's go over to this other scarred area, too, because a lot of these nodules look similar, right? They have yeah. this big cellular infiltrate. But right. let's look over here at the scarred area and see if, what we can glean from this area of scarring. Well, it looks to me like this scar has roughly the same shape as the nodules that don't have scar. So to me, that's one of the clues for this particular disease, and that is varying stages of fibrous deposition in nodules. And classically, we think about Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Exactly. 
So a fibrous nodule here within the central ovular regions with a similar shape. In fact, it's it's fusing with an adjacent oh, right. bronchovascular bundle here. It has a lot of cellularity. It has a lot of cellularity. So varying cellularity in irregular nodules, many of which have kind of a feathery... Uh, I kind of think of this as being like the medusa hair. You know, it's like the snakes of the medusa. They stick off the nodule. And right at the edge of the nodule is where... In the cellular ones, we see most of these peculiar histiocytes, which I believe are Langerhans cells. Right. So the patient's clinical history is? Smoker. Smoker. Extensive smoking history because pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis is almost always associated with a smoking history. Now, in, in little kids, you know, you might think of some other form of Langerhans cell proliferation. Uh, you know, some of the systemic forms of uh, histiocytosis X can show up in the lung and non-smokers. But I think... For most patients, I'm, I'm going to say 95% of patients, you see Langerhans cells in the bi lung biopsy making nodules. The patient's a smoker. Exactly. And certainly that's the clinical history in this case. Patient comes in with smoking innumerable bilateral nodules that are upper lobe distributed. That's a key. And here is the wedge biopsy. The clinical concern was for widely metastatic disease. Obviously not the case in, in this patient. Not under the microscope, and it would be unusual if not unheard of, for the patient to have bilateral, multiple small nodules confined to the upper lung zones for metastatic disease. Exactly. Just doesn't happen. Now, do you need a CD1A immunohistochemical stain to confirm this diagnosis? Well, if I, if I were doing it in a, in a not consult situation, I probably would just sign it out. But as a consult, frequently the cases will come in with, I'm worried this is some sort of a tumor, and you're telling me it's a smoking-related disease, can you give me some proof other than your word? So sometimes we do the stain just to show uh, how prominently the Langerhans, cell, Langerhans cells are in these nodules. But For sure, but certainly, I mean, this is a classic, absolutely classic. appearance of pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis in a smoker. Right. So there you go. I think you got all three right. Yeah, you know, why doesn't this patient have cysts, you know? <laughs> Great question. Why does the patient not have cysts, right? Because we think about pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis as a cystic lung disease, right? right. But there, the, the histologic spectrum of PLCH is actually quite broad. It includes nodules, it includes cysts, it includes cavitary lesions. And when it gets to it be advanced, you can have abundant fibrosis. Some people send us cases thinking it's UIP. Right. And it's actually upper lobe predominant emphysema with fibrosis of pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytes. And maybe not many Langerhans cells at that stage. Absolutely. It's kind of like sarcoidosis. When sarcoid goes into its late stage, it's mainly fibrosis with very few granulomas. Langerhans cells, same problem. Langerhans cell histiocytosis can be scarred with very few Langerhans cells in a later phase of the disease. Exactly. Okay, so that does it for uh, for this unknown case, uh, pulmonary Langerhans it. cell histiocytosis. I think you nailed it. Uh, don't forget to uh, like and comment on the video below. Thank you for watching.